For some people, the idea of using the re-drums on stage isn't that appealing. They might enjoy them as a practice tool or for home use, but do they really need to try taking them on stage? Last time we looked at some reasons why you would take electronic drums on stage, but there's definitely some people that wouldn't benefit from using an e-kit on stage. And there's some situations where it might not be optimal or even appropriate. So in the name of being balanced, let's look at why you might be the right person to just give it a miss. If you have a great sounding acoustic kit and you don't have any limitations like venue noise or trouble with transport, uh, and you feel like you can just get the sounds that you need out of your acoustic kit, you'll probably just want to stick with it for the overall playing experience, and that's completely understandable. If you have a good sound engineer or crew, or you're comfortable with micing up your own kit, then this might just sway you to stick with what you know. And if you need electronic drum sounds alongside your acoustic kit, then a hybrid setup should work really well for you in this situation. Okay, so I've put those quotation marks around the word on the title card for this one for a reason. I actually believe that if you have your e-kit set up optimally, there's not actually that much more to worry about in terms of reliability. However, there's something to be said for having confidence in your gear and confidence in your own ability to keep your gear up to scratch. If you aren't very confident in your gear and you're not 100% sure on how you would troubleshoot stuff on the go, then you might be better off not introducing these things into your live setup. Dealing with issues in the moment is a skill in and of itself, and if you don't feel like you could manage that if you're unsure, or you just don't want to think about anything extra on top of what could go wrong with an acoustic kit, then it might not be for you. A lot of people advise to bring spares of all sorts of things when you're running e-drums, and I can kind of see why. If an internal trigger stops working, then it's not as simple as a head change or swapping out a symbol. And if your module somehow dies, then it's game over. I'll often just try to make sure that I've got an extra pad with me, or at least I prioritize which bits of my kit and which pads I will swap around if something does go wrong. And I have like a Roland external trigger that I used to use on my acoustic kit that's usually knocking around in a bag somewhere just in case. On the flip side, I've only had maybe like a handful of times that a pad or symbol has failed on stage in the last four to five years or so. And I'd possibly say that I've had more things go wrong uh, with my acoustic kit in that time. Now, the scale of like a pad dying or your module dying on stage is probably a little worse than some of the things that can go wrong with an acoustic kit. And you should definitely make sure you've got things like surge protectors on your plugs and you should visually inspect your wiring on a regular basis and things like that. But there are show-stopping problems that can affect an acoustic kit too. Simple things like if you don't have enough spares with you and your pedal breaks or you put a a kick drum head through or a snare drum head through that could completely end it i think that the issue really is more preparedness than anything else another argument that i often hear is that people will say things like oh well what, what would you do if the power goes out with an acoustic kit you can just keep playing right but if the power goes out there is no show the pa would go the amps would go the lights would go it would just be you playing an acoustic kit on your own miles away from the audience in the dark. It's not the best argument, but it is one that I've heard quite a few times, so I thought I'd just mention it. This one's a completely understandable point. If you haven't yet achieved a sound that you like through a PA, then you might just want to stick with an acoustic kit with a sound that you know. Making your eardrums sound good through PA speakers isn't actually always that easy. And depending on your module, it could actually take quite a bit of work and time investment to get it right. If you can't afford a higher end module, then there's always a chance that that sound that you hear in your headphones isn't going to translate very well to a PA or with a live band. Like with a reliability issue, if you're not confident in your sound versus an acoustic kit, then don't put yourself through the trouble of trying to work it all out just for the sake of it. And just a quick heads up, my next video will actually be about optimising the sound and setup of your electronic drum kit for gigging. So if these points so far apply to you, then check out the next video because it might help you. 
So I am going to backtrack a little bit on one of the points that I made in my previous video um, about economy of space and potentially not needing as much gear with an e-drum kit as you might do with an acoustic kit. And I'm going to spin it around and say, yeah, there's a potential chance that you will need to take more gear with you when you're running an e-drum set up live. What you've managed to lose by not bringing microphones and potentially extra drums for additional sounds, you uh, will end up making back up for potentially by bringing things like in-ear monitors and some kind of amplification to be heard on stage. Depending on your setup, you might need to bring things like DI boxes with you. Some people really can't use their e-drums live without some kind of butt kicker on their throne to really feel the sound that they're putting out. So it's really going to depend on your exact situation as to how much gear you might need to bring with you. The venues that you play might have you covered, but if they don't, then there's a chance that you're going to be hauling more gear than you thought you would with an e-drum setup. To some degree, this on-stage field point links back to that gear point. Depending on what gear you have available, you or your bandmates might not enjoy the on-stage feel of running e-drums live because you don't get that same air movement and immediate volume that you do from an acoustic kit. There's a bunch of different ways that you can try and replicate it. For yourself, you can use those butt kickers I mentioned that give you the bass frequencies directly through your throne. For you and the band, you can add a PA speaker and maybe even a sorb to your on-stage setup that's dedicated just to the drums, and that way you can still get that big face full of sound that you would get out of an acoustic kit. But it isn't going to be exactly the same, and if it doesn't work for you, then you might want to avoid it. Some people really aren't going to gel that well with that kind of detachment um, from the sound source and the sound, and whether or not you like it is going to be personal preference, and whether or not your bandmates like it, well, you have to decide whether you put any stock in that one really. And it can also be reintroducing some of the problems that you were trying to solve by running e-drums in the first place. I had another point, yeah. What was it? Future Luke here, I got to the editing process and then I remembered what that point was. So it kind of bridges the gap between the unhappiness in your sound and the additional gear point. Basically your own gear, if you're bringing something like part of your own PA or a drum monitor, it needs to be good quality. What you might find if you're turning up to a venue that doesn't have a great PA or one that you're providing your own PA for is if those speakers aren't very good, they're going to give a really bad representation of your electronic drum kit. Nothing makes your e-drum sound worse than a bad PA. It can make it sound wimpy, lifeless, kind of like a toy. And I think this is part of what gives e-drums a bad rep on stage. If you don't have really good gear with you and you're not super confident that the gigs you turn up to are going to have a PA that can accurately represent your drum kit, then you might be better off with your acoustic drums because at least the acoustic kit as a sound source will be bolstering the PA's lack of power. You can get away with a slightly wimpier PA with a good drum kit in the right situation, whereas if you don't have a great PA or you don't have a good monitor backing up your electronic drum kit, it could just not sound nice and then it's not worth the hassle of bringing it with you if it's going to sound naff. Let's see if this edits together well. Maybe not. Different gigs and different venues can affect the logistics of your performance. If you play a lot of shows with multiple bands on the lineup where you might be sharing kit, or there's a house kit, throwing an e-kit into the mix could be a surefire way of introducing more problems than you're solving. The reality of these situations is that they often rely on quick turnarounds and common decency, so making things more complicated could very quickly annoy people. Now, of course, there's things that you can do to remedy this. If you know you can set up and tear down quickly, and you're happy to potentially have a different stage set up to the other bands, then great, you can probably make it work. And depending on whether you're the first band or the last band on, you can work together to organise the stage set up around that. There's a level of conscientiousness involved in these situations, and if you show everybody that you've considered the whole show rather than just your own show, that's going to go a long way to making this situation work out okay. If you don't think you could pull that off, it might be better to stick with the acoustics. So those are the main points that I feel are reasons that you might not want to use your electronic drums live. It mostly comes down to preference of sound and feel, some bits of expense and investment in your gear, and the logistics of the kind of shows that you're going to be playing. If you think I've missed anything important, feel free to let me know in the comments. 
share your gig stories, good or bad. And if you haven't seen my counterpart video where I go into the reasons why you should use your electronic drums live, then please go check that out and see if I make a good enough case for you. I hope that some of the points that I've raised here might help you in your live choices. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you like the content. There's more videos about using your eDrums live coming up soon. Thanks for watching.